Here's a DIY on how to install the Fuelit Stage 1 low pressure fuel pump upgrade for an N54 powered car. So it's using the Walbro 255 LPH pump running in series with the stock pump. This will allow you to run higher mixtures of ethanol, comfortably an E60 mixture, and is quite straightforward to install. Since you're going to be working in your gas tank, you want to have at most a quarter tank of gas. The less you have, the easier this job will be. So the reason I'm going with the stage one pump is because it retains the use of the fuel bucket, whereas stage two and three moves to a bucketless system. The issue with the bucketless system is track driving, where if you go under half a tank of gas, you can potentially starve your engine of gas. When I'm driving in 30 minute sessions, I often go through half a tank of gas, so a stage two or three setup wouldn't be for me. If you're looking to run full E85, stage two or three might be a better system. However, if you're looking for five to 600 horsepower or track driving, then stage one is probably the better option for you. All right, to begin, we're going to unplug the battery. So in the rear right side of the trunk, there's going to be a little panel. You can rotate the clip and take this panel off. Then you can come in with a 10 millimeter socket and undo the negative side of the battery. So next to get the rear seat out of the way so you can start working on the car. You're gonna to wanna to lift from the left side, the right side, and the center. Uh, you're just gonna to wanna to pull up very aggressively. It takes a good amount of force and it'll practically just pop out. Uh, for the seat belt, for the center seat, uh, there's a little tab you have to press in. If you come in with a screwdriver, you can just press it and it'll pop right out. Then you can just take the seat off. Uh, underneath the seat, there's going to be a little felt cover where you can just lift it up and I taped it to the back of the seat so it was out of the way while I worked. So you're just going to have these four 10 millimeter bolts and you come out. Alright, so once you get this cover undone, uh, we're going to have a few uh, electrical connections we're going to have to undo. Um, so, firstly, start with these, squeeze on both sides, pull up. Okay, so then for the vent line on the back, there's a little button. Push it in, that just pops right off. All right, I'll get the larger vent hose out. So press in both buttons. There we go. All right, next there's this large metal ring around the top of the fuel bucket. So I went in with a 3 8 extension socket on it and you can just wedge it in between each of the grooves and you're going to hit it with a mallet. Uh, it is it surprisingly required a lot of force so don't be afraid to hit it. Um, it'll take a few hits you just like rotate the ring off then it'll come right off and the top of the fuel bucket will start to float up. Next to undo this tan vent hose, you're going to need to press in the clip on both sides. I could not get it out, I ended up just breaking it. The kit with the low pressure fuel pump will come with an additional one in case you do break it, because apparently that's pretty common. Next you can take out the wiring for the pump and the level sensor. You just press in the tab with the screwdriver and then you can pull those right out. Next you're going to come in and take off this fuel output line. It is the orange hose with the 90 degree black fitting. For me it was pretty tedious to get off. It required a lot of force pressing in that button and pulling upwards. Next, you can come undo those two black hoses. They will pop right out of the bracket with some upwards force. Now you can remove the bucket from the tank 
As you're pulling it out, be careful not to damage the level sensor on the side of the bucket. Also be aware that the bucket is going to be full of gas. There's a little tab on the bottom you can press to slowly drain it, or you can take it out and dump it into an external gas tank. Next, once the bucket is out, you can take out the level sensor. So you want to press the sensor towards the outside of the bucket while pulling up. It's going to require a good amount of force. Once that's out, you can unhook the green wires and remove that entire assembly from the bucket. So where the wires come out, you can drill a hole down here for the pump retention clip. So you can zip tie the pump onto the bucket so that it's not just floating around in your gas tank. Uh, so one thing you want to watch out for is this fuel filter inside. It's kind of like a large tea bag. Um, when you're drilling, you want to make sure that you don't uh, accidentally cut into that. So you want to go really, really slow uh, and then verify that, yeah, you're not going to hit that. So I used a 1164 inch bits and it works really well. So it just moves around. That should be uh, should be plenty sufficient. All right, now you can go ahead and plug the pump in. So simple as pushing that till you hear that click. All right, so now we need to splice into the stock wiring for the low pressure fuel pump. So I'm gonna attempt to Splice into the line. So I cut out a section and I'm going to come through, cut that with a razor. Okay, uh, we can come in with our bullet splice here. I'm gonna use the back end of this blade, so not the sharp part, to tuck it in. Then I'm also gonna come through and solder, so I'm gonna get my solder yarn heated up. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and plug in your other connection, just like that, and then close this right up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start reinstallation. So first we're going to get our bucket back down into the sink. So there's not a lot of room to work with. Uh, get this down, down in there. So go ahead and move this pump over to the side of it. So you can go ahead and unplug the line that came attached to the upgraded low pressure fuel pump will plug into the top of the bucket on the stock pump. 
then that orange line that we removed from the bucket initially can be plugged onto the top of the new low pressure fuel pump. So essentially what it is doing is using two motors in series to increase pressure and provide more consistent pressure to the fueling system. Using the retention clip that we installed, you can slide in a zip tie and zip tie the pump to the side of the bucket. This will prevent the pump from getting damaged and moving around inside of the fuel tank. Once the pump is secured, zip tied in, and the lines are reattached, don't forget to replug those black vent hoses along with putting the level sensor back in, rerunning the wiring. Then you're able to put the white top back onto the pump. So once you're done inside the tank, everything is the same as removal. You want to make sure that you have all your connections plugged in. Then you can go ahead and replug in the battery. Once you're all done, you want to cycle the ignition a few times, so just go ahead and throw your key in the car, throw the car into ignition, you'll hear the pump priming, turn it off. You can just cycle this a few times. And then you're good to start the car. That concludes this video. I'll leave a link to the kit in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.